Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome back for all my subscribers. And if you're new, welcome. This is a wealth building channel. And we spend at least once a week talking about investments, once a week talking about some kind of money, tips to save money, um, careers, what to, how to get successful in them, interview tips, all that kind of stuff, Progr career progression. I have at least two days with some study guides for certifications for different careers, if you're wondering what that's all about. Now that's going to likely change in every three to six months, depending upon you, my subscribers, on what you are interested in. Right now I have two tech days and I do some tech. Now I work in a tech field and I'm a project manager for technology products. So that's why you're mainly seeing a lot of that right now. That could change. I'm planning on doing some health and wealth stuff on in the future. But I can't do uh, study guides for every kind of career field because some career fields you need to go out and actually do the work you know, to get your certification. Like as a nurse or a doctor, you can't do everything on the computer. You can do some stuff on the computer, but usually you have to go and do some kind of intern work where you go and actually do it, which is what we want. We don't want doctors that are practicing on a computer. We want them actually practicing in the real world. Unless I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know I would want my doctor practicing on real people. I don't want them cutting me up if they don't know it. So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. We're going to talk about cybersecurity investments today. That's what we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about career study guides today. Not in this video. Um, so cybersecurity, right? Why do we have a need for this? We have a need for this because in June 2017, Russian hackers lost, launched a malware attack on Ukraine, of course, right, called Not Petya. Uh, the attack which locked users out of their... Why do they always pick on Ukraine? I, I'd like to know why that is. Anyway, they locked users out of their own files unless they paid a ransom in Bitcoin. So if you didn't know this story, just one of the tactics in the conflict between these two nations that begun like three years earlier... But viruses don't respect borders, and this one spread far beyond Ukraine. It infected U Europe and the U.S. even. And even in Russia itself, um, Mondelez, the giant global food company headquartered in Chicago, was hit hard. Not Petya disrupted, not P-E-T-Y-A is how it's spelled, disrupted email, logistics, caused $100 million in damage, the White House called it the most destructive and costly cybersecurity attack in history. And international destruction was like $10 billion. You don't hear a lot about this too much, but that's the reason, one of the reasons all this started and why we have a need for it. And um, five years later, which would be right now in June of 2022, the Russians invaded Ukraine and the war is raging. So... This is June of 2022. They invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. So experts have been expecting more cyber des de devastation. But so far, Russia has not knocked out Ukraine's power grid. Well, I believe they have. But um, they've not knocked out their power grids because probably because they need a lot of their power grids for them to get around. So the biggest surprise to date has been the lack of success for Russia with cyber attacks against Ukraine. It's not from a lack of trying the U.S. government cybersecurity and infrastructure security agent issued an alert disclosing that leading up to this invasion, Russia deployed destructive malware against organizations in Ukraine to destroy the computer systems that were inoperable. And also surprising is that Russia not successfully launched the cyber attacks against the U.S. and U.K. and the German, and uh, as well as WannaCry attacks against investigated the same year by North Korea. So North Korea had a WannaCry attack, and uh, this one taught businesses and government key lessons about protecting themselves. And another is that Russians know that the U.S. uses a strategy of deterrence 
um, akin to its policy on nuclear weapons, such as the primary defense against a major attack. If Russia shuts down the power grid or large parts of it, the U.S. has indicated it will respond massively, um, throwing the Russians into a cold and dark themselves. So it's a pretty big mess, and there is no reason for us to be smug because we don't forget that the Colonial Pipeline, the largest fuel network of the kind, and the U.S. was breached last year, shutting off its operation. And it was all caused by a single compromised password that could have been prevented by a multi-factor authentication, a basic cybersecurity tool. This is one of the reasons that um, it's such a need. And uh, it's such a need, if you didn't know, and why it's a good investment to invest in these kinds of stocks. So if you didn't know all this, this is um, interesting that our colonial pipeline, which we don't hear about these things too much um, unless you're in a top secret field and you're studying the cybersecurity, which I am, by the way. So that's why I know already know a lot about this, and that's why I know it's a hot thing. And that's why I put a lot of these on my channel. And it's not to say that this is an interesting thing for everybody, but it is um, good for investing, even if you don't know about it and you don't want to study it and you don't want to do it. And it's okay because it's not for everybody. We all have our skills and what we're good at. And I talk about this in my career videos, so I'm not going to go down this tangent right now, but it's good to invest in this. And that's why I'm explaining all this to you. Colonial paid the Russian hackers a ransom of 4.4 million, a vulnerability called Log4J, in free software that had led to attacks from hackers in Russia, China, Iran, and other antagonists of the U.S. The Wall Street Journal reports 10 million attempts to exploit the Log4J vulnerability per hour. The CISA website carries a gigantic banner and it says Shields Up. That's what I should have named this video, by the way. A warning that times are perilous. In the cyber world, hackers always have the upper hand, but defenders are catching up. And this is our goal in the U.S. The companies that deploy the software, hardware, intelligence, and training, the thwart attacks have gotten better at what they do. They know how to invest in these cyber securities, these risk of huge losses. And the cyber security sec sector is booming. Gartner, the research firm, um, pegged global revenues at $150 billion in 2021, a 12% in, increase over 2020. And it's nearly doubled since 2017 when this whole Russian invasion started um, with the whole cybersecurity thing. And of course it began in Ukraine, right? And by the way, I'm not getting any of my stuff off the top of my head. Most of this stuff is coming from Morningstar Direct. I'm not making this up off the top of my head. I'm not that good, but so Alphabet and Microsoft also offer cyber protection programs. And Microsoft's security revenue last year was about 15 billion, more than any other freestanding company. So among those more focused opportunities, turn first to the largest stock, which is Palo Alto Networks. And I believe I have that on there. Yeah, I do right here. Um they have a market capitalization share outstanding price of sixty billion, like right here, market value in billions, and they are more more than quadrupled. They are known for their firewalls, which inspect internet traffic, protect against viruses, spyware, data leakage, as well as identity vulnerabilities. Like many cybersecurity firms, Palo Alto is still unprofitable. But you're if you're buying in the future, in which company sells. It, this would be an absolute necessity. Um, all of these prices are from January to April, January 22 to April 8th of 2022. So these are likely to, more than likely, will go up because this is such a huge um, importance right now. Um, but we'll see. I'll probably do some more videos on this in the next, you know, as I get new data and new information comes out. I will do videos on this again and you can see how much it's gone up. So in like three years, when you all go back and watch these videos, you can see you'll be like 60 billion. That's like nothing. It's like 120 now, right? 
So it'll be interesting to watch. So another larger cybersecurity company, which is Fortinet, which is up here, uh, 54 billion offers a wide range of tools, including intrusion prevention, anti malware software, and their sales spiked 29% last year. They made it a small profit. The shares have risen, risen nearly 20% since the war in Ukraine began, which makes sense because that's how the whole cybersecurity thing began, was because of Russia and Ukraine. The stock prices earnings ratio is 68 right here and based on analyst forecast for earnings for the year ahead of course CrowdStrike which is pretty comp which is pretty um, popular is especially adept at protecting endpoints that is devices such as the smartphones the workstations that communicate with our corporate networks CrowdStrike revenue nearly all of it came from reoccurring subscriptions which soared 66% for the fiscal year ending in January 2022. The stock risen accordingly, but is still worth a close look. A recent update of cybersecurity industry by security firms Needham and um, company identifies tenable holdings. Is that on here? Yes, right here, near the bottom as the best way to play the convergence of information technology operational Technology For many firms, information technology housed in the firm's own government systems or in the cloud drives operational technology. This conversion is great for business, but it also leaves a company open to catastrophic attack. Tenable is unprofitable, and its market cap is more than 10 times its sales, but the risk is worth taking. It's unprofitable and its market cap is more than 10 times its sale. So hopefully this will, probably more than likely, it may come up. Right now it's pretty low on the scale and no B4A. It's also pretty low. This must be a new company. Yeah, we will talk about that. Other companies like I like all have market caps between four billion and six billion, including no no before, whose shares are still about one third below. Tenable is also a potential takeover candidate because in a sector that is consolidating, Norton Life Life Lock, Norton Life Lock. A powerhouse on the consumer side of cybersecurity is awaiting regulatory approval to complete its merger with AVAST, which is A-V-A-S-T, a firm based in Czechoslovakia Republic that focuses on protecting small businesses. And Norton has a solid franchise and provides good balance to fast-growing, grow more expensive companies in the sector. Norton trades as P P and A of just 14. Okay, so um, sale point technology holdings, which is also one here near the bottom, uh, specializes in identity security and qual qual here these right right here. Um, look at Microsoft. Oh my gosh, two billion two hundred and sixty three. Qual, the, I can't even pronounce that, sales up nearly 50% over the last three years. So you see this? It's, it was, and three years ago it was 19, now it's up 33. Uh, pretty impressive. So you might want to get in on that one. And this one might be growing. These two are pretty low. Um, but you see this one is slowly going up, Norton Life Lock. So if you study these kinds of things, then, then you know. Among the exchange-traded funds, consider Global X Cybersecurity, which is at the bottom. And um, it has an expense ratio of 0.5. In 2020, in its first full year, it returned 70.8. doesn't show it on here, but uh, it gained another 13% in 2020. Uh, 2021, I'm sorry, and it's breaking even in 2022. So it's going up. Palo Alto, Fortinet, CrowdStrike, Tenable, Norton, LifeLock, Quals are all holding so the ETF providers. A handy way, all of these are suggested and uh, by the experts for cybersecurity investing. 
So I tried to get all that in under 20 minutes and we did it. And I thank you all for watching if you stayed with me. This is definitely something you should consider. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you, God.